Here's everything you need to know about the new Windcraft update 2.0.2. From a new subscription rank to guild housing, a general housing revamp and long awaited assassin changes. The hero beta for the update has just been released, but I was given early access to the dev server for this video. This update fully overhauls housing. If you haven't gotten into it before, now's the time. With guild housing and numerous other awesome additions, housing is now more fun than ever before. Regarding your personal housing there's been a huge shift everyone now gets access to their full island and ranked players now can have multiple islands most noticeable is the new tool belt which adds four new tools to your building arsenal the region tool lets you zone up your build for area specific permissions and settings like private chat rooms and designated pvp spots ranked players can create more regions the liquid wand lets you finally add water and lava on your housing, but it's pretty cursed. The replication wand is a builder's wand that lets you copy blocks quickly and effectively, however it requires hero rank or higher. And lastly the blueprint tool lets you copy, rotate and flip a selected area. This also requires hero or higher. And speaking of rank bonuses, VIP plus or higher will be able to have players visit their island even when they're not online. Champions can now place a permanent market booth on their plot and generally all ranks have higher NPC and region limit. There's also lots of quality of life aspects like access to the block bank from your hotbar, auto inventory refill when you run out of blocks if you still have them in your bank, and island settings and tool belt also in the hotbar. You can also add a name and a description to your housing island and you can select music to play from the region. And if you're VIP plus or higher, you can select music from the entire OST. There's also been additions to the NPCs. You can get teleporters that can link up to other teleporters. You can get a misc bucket, a storage space for misc items like quest and event items. There's also a jukebox where you can have music play and queue up songs. Most impressively is the addition of furniture, like interactable chairs, curtains and playable instruments. There's also a message board, write messages for your visitors to read. And speaking of visitors, there's now housing upvotes. Vote for the houses you like and the public tab will now recommend upvoted and trending houses. This all sounds cool, but housing still might scare you because it requires emeralds and materials to buy things. But don't worry, because all prices have been changed, NPCs are cheaper and blocks never increase in price. And they finally added it, totally thanks to me, Guild Housing. Guilds can now purchase a huge plot, basically the size of a city. This will allow for some epic guild hall builds. It will be open to guild members to join at all times, but the owner has to assign permissions. And for all the rank exclusive features like replication and blueprint tools, you instead of needing ranks need guild boosts. But we'll talk about those more in a second. Do you want to support Windcraft further or want pretty good benefits? Well this update introduces the Silver Bull subscription, which isn't a standalone rank but a subscription based add-on for already ranked players. It gives you guild boosts for guild housing perks, unlock different tiers for perks like more NPCs, blueprint and replicator tools and more. Subscribers also get less tax on the trade market, making items slightly cheaper. Double rank rewards, so double the amount of totems and daily crates, and for champion, double merchant booth duration. You also get double event crates, and much cheaper to scrap cosmetics. If you don't have hero, you also get beta access. And a really cool perk is armor, being able to be toggled to be invisible in the cosmetic menu. You also get a monthly share or it can be bought separately on the store. It's basically a token that you can trade in for store items. This token can also be traded to other players in game. The trading was added to better control the IRL trading issue that's recently been plaguing Windcraft. All classes have also gotten significant changes, but finally Assassin has gotten the balancing and love it deserves. Let's take a look at the new and changed abilities. Mirror image makes so clones will reduce the damage you take for up to 2 hits per clone. Death magnet pulls mobs towards the location you cast vanish when you leave vanish. 
Parry will give you a 30% damage boost every time you trigger an agility dodge on top of making the next spell cost no mana. Shurikens now work with clones and have increased speed. Diversion does it so whenever you hit enemies with Lurd, you and your allies get extra health. Distraction allows you to get damage reductions when hitting enemies. Bamboozle lets you sacrifice a clone for a teleporting explosion with lots of damage. Dissolution makes you immune to knockback and gain resistance when you enter Vanish. Nightcloak Knife consumes marks when casting spin attack while vanished for a knife to mimic all your attacks with reduced damage. Flow State gives you a temporary increase in damage when attacking enemies without pause. Pirouette boosts the damage when activating Dancing Blade and shoots you into the air resetting dash, allowing you to stay airborne. The other classes have also gotten some changes, so let's take a look. For Mage, every Ice Snake upgrade has gotten an increase in damage, Dividalize has gotten a decrease in damage reduction, and now Riftwalker and Lightbender and a combo of the two have gotten significant meteor balancing. Lightbender has also gotten an increase in damage with two new abilities. Archer's Frenzy has now become weaker, and Arrow Hurricane has gotten a decrease in damage. And Crepuscular Ray now requires you to be 4 blocks above the ground to cast it. Warrior's Fireworks and Comet don't trigger instantly on enemies with knockback immunity anymore. And Whirlwind Strike has gotten a decreased vertical hitbox to match the visuals. Enraged Blow is now weaker, but a new ability, Better Enraged Blow, increases it further if you invest more into Fallen. And lastly, Ragnaroker has gotten a significant decrease in damage and duration. And for Shaman, Summoner has had its damage reduced across the board, and Double and Triple Totem has gotten reworked to be less overpowered. And lastly, Ritualist can access Vengeful Spirit so you can get yet another damage bonus. There's also been some overall changes like Overhealth from Diversion and Blood Sorrow decaying properly and Uppercut and Multi-Hit hitboxes being adjusted to hit mobs that are immediately close to you. And overall, many abilities have gotten icons and color coding to make it much simpler to understand. These are also just the biggest changes to the ability trees. For more detailed information, read the official changelog. Another addition is the Isles of Fiction. If you've ever missed a previous event, don't worry. Take the Sea Skipper to the Isles of Fiction to find merchants selling previous event items. Not only do we get a lot of new things, plenty of bug fixes and small changes have been made. You can now pick up items from further away, and the jukebox has been fully reworked to be much better. Nemrak has also gotten a new Guild War Arena. Then almost every existing softlock or bug in quests have been fixed, literally over 100 fixes. So if you've ever experienced a bug or a softlock, go try that quest again and it more than likely is now fully working. And that was everything that you need to know about the new update. It's now in beta, so get hyped. Start gathering materials for blocks for your housing. And for that, check out my profession guides for 2.0. Goodbye!